So today I'm going to take you through a really quick and simple tutorial about being able to add some cool neon shapes to photographs. So let's get right into it. So this is our starting photograph. Now you can use anything really. I, I have found that sometimes low key shots work quite nicely because the bright neons work quite well against them. But it's not to say that you can only do it or you should only really do it uh, on those types of images. But let's just show you with this one. It's a little bit more kind of high key. Um, so all we need to do to begin with is just to create a new layer. So it's always best to be working on a separate layer from your main document. Now we want to draw a shape that we're going to convert into this neon. It's totally up to you. You could actually draw your own using a pen tool or you could come down to the separate toolbar down here and there is a triangle tool right at the very, very bottom here, maybe a little bit further up, depending upon how your menus are laid out. But I think this could be a good little shape just to start off with, just to kind of suit the shape of our subject here, the way that her dress kind of fans out left and right there. Now, in terms of our actual color setup, it is best to probably start it off as white. And you can change it if you wanted to, but generally, um, I found that white looks quite nice. So we want to actually get rid of the fill because effectively we just want the outline of this shape to be visible. So if we just make sure our fills set to its white icon with that red line through to say there's going to be no fill. And then our stroke is then set to white. Now we can reduce the actual width of these. It just depends on the size of your document, how big or how thick you actually want it. I'm going to start off with it there. If it seems a little bit too big, you may want to go back and redo it. And then now it's just simply a case of drawing your shape. So I'm going to hold down the shift key just to keep it in proportion. There we go. OK, so we've got our shape in position there. But I'm thinking actually I want to change it because this it does kind of match up with the shape of our model here. But I like to add a bit of contrast. So what I'm actually going to do is go to edit and free transform. Right click and then flip vertically. So we're just going to flip that layer around and I'm actually going to position it now so we've actually got that line going right through our model but it's not going to be an issue a little bit later on because we are going to get rid of parts of that but we'll come to it shortly so now that we've got everything set up here we need to actually add that glow so let's bring our layer panel a little bit closer into our photograph here and now in our triangle layer we're going to double click so we can get our layer styles window now what we want to do is add the glow to it and that's simply done by using this outer glow option straight away by clicking it you can already see a bit of a glow that's applied to the image but we can then choose the color from it it's up to us as to how colorful we want it to be we can keep it nice and simple like this we can complement and use the colors that are actually in the frame if we press that little color box there we can then even select a color exactly the same as what's in our photograph with this little color picker so if we press that there we can use the blues we can maybe use these these brunette redhead tones it's totally up to us we can then customize it a bit further do tend to find obviously the brighter colors will translate that a little bit better so i think we're going to go for a bit of a bolder blue in this instance now we have got options further down underneath here in this outer glow um, menu where we can change the opacity obviously reducing the opacity is not really going to give us the glow effect that we're looking for so we'll keep it fairly high the noise, we can add a little bit of speckled noise if we wanted to, or if you prefer to keep it a bit more cleaner, I'd just reduce that. With the spread, as it said, it makes it more intense. Now, you tend to lose that kind of soft glowing effect by increasing the spread a little bit more. But what does make it look quite nice is to increase the size of it. So again, we can increase the spread and the glow a little bit more. So again, ultimately depends upon your version of your image. And then again, you can change the range, which again is how much it's actually uh, uh, spreading from the main object itself. And similar again with the jitter, it's very, very small amounts of changes in terms of the jitter itself. But ultimately, we've, we've got our main object sat there with our glowing outline. Now, as I said, obviously, it's running past the model's face there, which we don't really want. It, it, it's going to cause obviously a bit of distraction. Simply to get rid of that, we're going to add a layer mask to our triangle. I'm going to go to our paintbrush tool now to make sure that brush is selected and our foreground color down in our swatches is set to black. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. We're going to make our brush head a bit smaller. And now all it is is as simple as just clicking on the layer mask. Just using a soft edge brush, I may make it a little bit harder. 
because we want it to kind of fit, look as if it's fading in from behind the model and then back out on the other side again. So just take this part a little bit slowly because you want it to try and make it look as, as unique and as convincing as possible. Now, again, we can actually have the whole thing appearing behind the model itself um, by erasing it around the bottom of her dress and her legs. But I actually quite like the way that it looks like it's, it's more three-dimensional. Parts come in front, parts come behind. But there we go. That's a really simple way of adding some more modern neon shapes to photographs. I hope you give it a go. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, keep looking out for more for iPhotography. Thank you so much for watching.